Welcome to the Strategy Mob Podcast. Tune in for everything you need to know to stay in the know regarding the automotive industry. Here's your host, Jason Harris. Hey, 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 what's going on, Podcast Nation? It is Jason Harris here. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Strategy Mob. Today, I have the one. Strategy Mob. The Strategy Mob. Yeah. I, I need an intro for that, by the way. Like, I've been I've been thinking about that lately. Like, I need, like, a, a song or a rap or a jam yeah. or something to go with it, You need right? something so you can get some royalties. <laughs> like for real. Royalties. Every time that song gets played, you'll make 41 cents. <laughs> exactly. So today, I am joined with the one, the only, the oh-so-famous Mr. Mr. Dan Williams. Dan, thank you for taking the time to jam with me today, man. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate it. Hey, Dan, for everybody out there um, that kind of mm-hmm. don't know your origin story or how you got started in the industry, I thought it'd be fun to kind of kick off today's podcast uh, with that story. So, you know, Dan, okay. how did you get started in this crazy little world we call the automotive industry? Well, one day um, I was just swimming around in the primordial ooze and I think it was like thunder or lightning or something it just hit the ooze and all of a sudden I was just here. No, I um I actually attended a, a class by Tom Johnston, who's at Search Path, and it was on, um you know, like how to uh, find the perfect job for yourself. But then it dawned on me that the perfect job is being a recruiter and just giving other people jobs. Uh, because for a while, I used to, um, I used to, sign people up for credit cards and it's so funny but i was like well that's like uh like you know giving people money so now i might as well give people jobs too it seems like so easy you know so easy to do plus i could just change people's lives and i could help a lot of different people so that's just how i got into it that's that's really cool you know i I find every like i Huh? You know, go ahead. I find out a lot of us, we kind of oh. like kind of stumble yeah. our way into these things, right? Like, yeah, I mean, I don't think I anybody just woke that. up one day and like, hey, I'm going to go jump into the automotive industry. It's like, no, we just well, kind of well, tumble our way into it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the reason that I got into automotive is because, you know, obviously somebody had to train me to be a recruiter. And that's what they did was automotive. So I worked for them. Well, I didn't work for them. I worked with them. And then uh, I just kind of, as I started getting my own clients, just start spinning up, you know, a desk until it turned into a business, you know, then, uh, then I just started my own business. Once I got clients, I was, it was off to the races. Now, speaking of the automotive business, a lot has changed. I mean, just organically as an industry in, you know, the last six months, you know, I've, I've been in the industry long enough. I've seen kind of ups and downs and I've seen manufacturers come and even go in some cases <laughs> being up here in Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, the, talk about just a fundamental change in how we hire people. Uh, who are we attracting? You know, I, th- I think there's just there's so so much that has changed in that space. So I'm just kind of curious to kind of get your overall thoughts on the recruitment side of the business. All right, what do you see that has changed in the last six months due to this pandemic? Uh, what's changed is that um, it's been harder and harder to find technicians. Obviously, the uh, the bottom six percent of salespeople have been laid off. And um, the automotive industry has actually made a lot of money due to the pandemic as well. I think that has has something to do with like, you know, uh, the PPP loans and the stimulus plans and or package and stuff like that. So, you know, there are a lot of used cars being sold. And obviously, you know, uh, new cars, you know, weren't even being made because of manufacturers, you know, nobody was at work. So, uh, you know, people got their money and then they just spent their money on used cars. No, that's so, true, man. Like, I, the, look, yeah. there has there look there has been a, a lot of shifts there. I mean, look, as an industry, we had to change. We've probably changed more in the way that we approach our communication with our customers, and also the way we staff. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many dealerships I'm I'm consulting with right now, where I'm sitting down mm-hmm. looking at their P and L statements, and they're going, "Well, look, 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 how much money I've made so far this year! Like, this is going to be my best year ever." And there's this kind of almost kind of false sense 
of success because you know they've cut a third of their labor expenses. You know, yeah. they're 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 getting you know they're getting support and loans from the government or mm-hmm. you know the mm-hmm. province or state depending on where they live and and all the, the all yeah. the other kind of environmental you know effects that go into that. But but there seems to be kind of that that that, that false sense, and, and I'm a little concerned right now. There's so many dealerships out there that are still kind of operating at sixty or seventy percent of their staff some dealerships have are fully back online which is great and i think it just kind of depends mm-hmm. you know where you are where you are right now but you know how do, you know how is that going to affect you know our industry i mean this is kind of my question for you as your opinion how is that going to affect mm-hmm. kind of the way that we recruit when we've kind of come out and said look i can continue to operate operate my business with a third less staff do you see that's going to be an issue and you know do you see people not um, want to get into the business because of that i think that I feel like it was already going that direction, you know, with the with the one point of sale uh, locations. And but here's the thing: you're always going to welcome more salespeople, especially if you don't have to pay these salespeople hourly. So there's always there's always going to be room for if you're smart and you run a dealership and somebody says, "Hey, I want to sell cars. You don't have to pay me, and I could sell 20 cars a month." You're gonna say, well, let me see, if, let me see if you can do it. You know, I got inventory. Okay, if you can sell these cars, you know, I'll pay you commission. Why wouldn't you? You know, you'd have to be an idiot to not say yes to that. I'm just gonna be honest. You really got would have to be dumb if somebody told you that they could sell your cars, you know, for free, basically. No, no look, it's you know? it's, no. it's totally true, man. Yeah, you know, you know, the oh, one yeah. thing that I'm a little concerned about though is like bringing new people into the industry right now. You know, I'm just kind of looking at it from kind of, you know, an outside kind of in, you know, there are Mm -hmm. dealerships out there that are bringing staff back and then letting them go and then bringing them back and then letting them go. And I hate to see it, I hate to say it, it's it's not for every dealership. I think there's some dealerships that have done a phenomenal job of making a good commitment to their staff. But there are definitely a handful of dealerships out there that have just kind of taken the approach of, you know, our people are more of, not necessarily, they're, they're more of a, not an asset, more of just kind of a product. So I'll take them as in and out, in and out as I need them. And, mm-hmm. you know, I was talking the other day to a young gentleman who before the pandemic was thinking about getting into the car business and now talking to a lot of people in the business mm-hmm. are afraid to get into it and don't think it's necessarily like, I just don't think there's a lot of confidence right now um, in getting mm-hmm. into the business. And I'm curious if you're seeing the exact same thing. Like, do you see a lack of confidence of new people to get into the business? Um, I see. The business, honestly, it's really lacking technicians. It's hard to uh, to get technicians because everyone's brand specific. And then uh, a lot of the younger guys who are graduating from UTI, they're working at, uh, you know, at like uh, warehouses and factories and stuff like that. They're not really going into automotive. So that's that's really the problem. The problem lies in hiring. Is, is uh, that a confidence issue? Is, is that because they just don't necessarily have confidence in the automotive space right now? I think that in 2020, it's, it's just not a sexy job or something like where people just don't. I don't know. Don't know. Let's actually go with no that idea. for a minute. Like, like right now, look, when I first started in the business, right, it was sexy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember getting my, was like my second or third commission check and I'm going, damn, I'm going to have a fun weekend. (laughs) The checks are still like that. Well, they they, they, still like that though. But but that that sexiness seems to disappear. I don't know what's it. it, I'm I'm concerned right now is, is the fact that we as an industry have been more of a, maybe a transaction, so transaction focus and not people focus that attracting yeah, sure. new people into our space mm-hmm. has become increasingly difficult. I, mean, I think the people that are going to be looking for a new job, look, the fact that you're dangling a, a potential six figure income in front of me just doesn't seem to be enough for a lot of the new people that are looking to get into business. They wanna see more than just big commission checks which is probably different than when we started. I'm like, just give me the money and I'll give a crap about everything else. So right, like right. the way that we, I guess the way that we attract, and that's my question for you is right now, given the situation, given consumer confidence, how do we attract new blood into our, into our dealership? 
uh, it's all a numbers game. You just got to put money into marketing. You just got to, you know, you just got to, uh, you have to. So, so tell me a little bit more. So marketing, let's, let's, okay. So, um, exactly what kind of messages are you seeing to, that are most effective? I mean, look, marketing is so broad. So there's a lot of places we can spend money. Well, yeah, I was going to say, uh, if you need to, if you need to, if you want to try to attract top talent, you need to go to where they are and you need to attract them. You know, you need to have like commercials and stuff on, uh, on platforms like Twitch, on YouTube, um, on uh, what's the one where they dance and stuff. I don't know. What's the name of that? TikTok. Yeah, I know what you're talking TikTok. about. Yeah. <laughs> TikTok, man. Yeah, you got to put stuff, you got to put stuff on TikTok. You got to, you got to attract the new talent. It's a lot easier to give birth than it is to raise the dead. And um, you got to, you got to go to where they are so you can bring them in. You know, that's actually that's actually and, a really uh, good point, Dan. Um, so let's talk. Yeah. Let's d- let's dive a little deeper into that. You know, um, what what do we need to say in those videos? Um, is it we're trying we're trying to identify, I guess, you know, why huh? come work for my business? And I think it's look, income is just one aspect of it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what would you say, like top three reasons why someone should work for my dealership? And, and top those, three reasons. Yeah, why? exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be culture. It has to be, nobody likes to work a full week anymore. Uh, so it's got to be a lot of time off. It's got to be like a three or four day work week. It has to be like a three week vacation. There has to be a great culture. It has to be room for improvement. And, um, you know, they actually have to understand what the potential employee needs, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of businesses don't care about what the potential employee needs. They just care about their bottom line. So they need to find out exactly what the potential employee needs, and then they need to hold them accountable to obtaining that need. And then once they hold them accountable, then they're they're in this together, you know. And that's 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 what they need to do. No, I, I so like that. To, I like that kind of yeah, that accountability. Stop looking at an employee like they're a widget. You know, there you go. Exactly. Stop looking at them as just like a thing or a post or, or a sign. Card. Yeah, a trading yeah. card. I like that. That's actually makes more sense. In fact, in the industry, we kind of treat them almost like trading cards. It's like hey, I was I was at a yeah. I was at a um, uh, network a networking event prior to COVID, and I'm sitting there kind uh-huh. of talking with a bunch of managers of, of you know a similar brand, but they're just from different yeah. locations. And the way they were kind of talking about it, like, oh, you're looking for a new guy. Well, you know what, Mike's not really working out for me. How about uh, how about I give how about yeah, I give you my mic. Mike. And, uh, but you know, I need a new technician. So uh, you have that Carl person. Can you, how yeah. about this? I'll trade you my mic for your Carl. And I was like, are we really having a discussion like this? Like, mm-hmm. I was like this is ridiculous. But, but I have heard that, that, that type of conversation. So let's, I want, I want to kind of step back a little bit because you said something uh, about kind of culture, right? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I think, how do you, how do you market culture? to a potential uh, new hire? Man, that's a good question. How do I market culture? Um, <laughs> this is gonna be funny, but let's say it's a potential new hire uh, technician. You gotta find out if they like country music, what type of music they listen to, because there's a music playing in the shop all day long. And let's say like the shop's got nothing but, uh, but you know, Latin music playing, and this guy only likes country it's not going to be a good culture fit you know it's not it's not going to be one at all okay it's, no um, i like i can run with that i can dig that yeah. right like i like, like I can dig not, that. so um, it first kind of identify what kind of culture you have right and yeah, understand sure. understand that you're not going to you know uh pull someone you know <laughs> that's completely opposite of what you have right now and just expect them to just kind of gel with everybody else right yeah that's not going to work <laughs> it, it really isn't. So, so then I guess my question is like, from like, I get what you're saying. I totally understand. I kind of what you're saying. It's like, you know, if you if you if you have a a service department and they're playing a bunch of Latin music and you know, and someone walks in and that's not necessarily their jam, there can be just a big disconnect there as far as how they're going to gel with the team. So then, yeah. do you define what the team should be first? Or do you let the team define the culture? I guess that's what it is. Does the oh the I, team defines the culture? Okay, elaborate a little bit more on that. Um, well, the team is the culture. So the team has already defined the culture. So when you're bringing somebody new in, 
they can't, you know, they can't change the team. The team's not going to revolve around them. They're going to have to revolve around the team. There is no I in team. So this guy could be a rock star and um, he'll come there and he'll just be a cancer. And so, you know, it's, it's not good to, uh, to bring in, you know, cancerous situations. So that's something you want to look out for. It's like recruiting one-on-one. If it's not a good culture fit, it's, it's not worth the time, you know? So then how do you look for that? Like, I'm just gonna, always kind of curious. Like, let's say during the interview process, you're looking for a mm-hmm. culture fit, I guess, first, right? That's probably the most important thing is a culture fit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So h- how do you identify that culture fit first, you know, before you kind of identify what the, if they have the talent that fits the team as well? Um, well, something about culture fit is that uh, a lot of people, if they are brand specific, then that's pretty much their culture. So a dealership like a Chrysler dealership, those guys kind of got the same culture. They're all brand specific. Like when people work on Chrysler, they really mean I just work on Chrysler, you know, Uh, same thing with like Jaguar, Land Rover. Um, You just got to know, you just got to know like who can go where, like Toyota, it's kind of a toss up. So you just want to ask, you know, like uh, you want to find out about the culture at the dealership. And then you want to ask the candidate, you know, what type of culture are they used to working at? You know, is, are they used to a fast paced environment, slower environment? Are they used to an environment where everybody's treated like family? You know, what are they really looking for? You know, and then um, you can tell them about the culture at the dealership. If they want to check it out, they can check it out. But if, if they don't, they don't. But, you know. No, I think that's actually you, a really you, good point. You, you have a good, you pick up a good sense for these things, you know. Yeah, you, you do. You do. Now, you know, look, I, I find that in our in, in these type of podcasts, we end up talking a lot about like uh, what the dealers should be doing or what they should be looking out for to recruit the right person into their dealership. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to flip yeah. it, flip the book, though, a little bit on here. And let's talk a little bit more about the candidate. So let's say for the listeners or the people watching out there right now that are considering getting into the industry. All right. What advice would you give a salesperson? Um, and then also what advice would you give a technician? So we'll split it kind of two ways there. And so these are brand new people, you know, they've either done the training or have had some type of sales or technician type experience and are looking to get into automotive. All right. What kind of advice would you give someone totally fresh, just thinking about it? Well, uh, I would ask them if they have a plan. What's, do, what, do they have a life plan? You know, and uh, then I would let them know that this, that this is going to be able to help them achieve that, you know, that, uh, that end goal, you know, to the plan that they have, because you can easily do it. But if you don't have a plan, you will get caught up in the machine. And that's just, that's just uh, the, the truth. So that's a really good if point. you're a tech without a plan, you'll get caught up in the machine. If you are a sales guy without a plan, you'll get caught up in the machine. So you got to have a plan, period. If you don't have a plan, then this is not going to be the job for you. Just like any other job out there, you're going to complain and you're going to go home, complain to your spouse about work. And you're probably at work complaining about your spouse because you never had a plan. So first, (laughs) I like that. I've seen that happen, actually. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Um, So you got to have a plan. So don't have a plan. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the plan. Like just kind of okay. just your advice. All right. Someone that you know, maybe kind of you and say, hey, Dan, man, I'm thinking about this. Your your first initial advice to them is, dude, you, you got to have a plan. You got to make sure that this job actually fits within your plan. You know, h- how would you recommend someone structuring that kind of plan? Are we talking like a, a one year plan, a five year plan, a 25 year plan? Like how does someone kind of go about just in that initial start of developing out that plan to ensure that this business or this industry is the right match for them? Uh, well, first I got to find out what makes them happy. Good point. I like that. And then if they don't know what makes them happy, they don't, they don't, they don't have anything. So once after they find out what makes them happy, then they can start, you know, trying to figure out a plan. So after you find out what makes you happy, uh, you need to figure out um, what is it going to take for you to be happy every day because nobody wants to live their life miserable. So that needs to be your initial plan. You know, how can you have a happy life every day? And what are you willing to give up to be happy every day? And then um, you need to figure out exactly where do you want to be 
you know, where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be in three years? Where do you, where do you want to be next year? You know, so now we know that you want to be happy. So where do you really want to be and be happy? How much is it going to take for you to go there? How much, how much is this going to cost? How much is that going to cost? You know, then we want to figure out how much everything is going to cost. So then leading up to where you really want to be at in a year, two year, three year, five years, you can start, you know, biting off bit by bit until you've, you know, taken care of everything. So just, just kind of take it step by step. So uh, now that, now that we have this plan and you can take it step by step, uh, you know, with your plan, now we can hold you accountable for this plan and we can stick you at work. We can keep you coming to work. Yep. You know, we have our Monday like that. meetings. We could talk about everyone's plan, everyone's why, you know, some people may just want to be here for this amount of time. Some people for that amount of time, but for, for the time that I'm committed to you, this is if I was a GM or GSM or whatever, but for the time that I'm going to commit to you, I need for you to commit to me. This is my plan. You've shown me your plan. Let's do this together. You know, all of us, you know what I'm saying? If Tom wants to be gone in a year and he's done everything on his plan, we're going to throw Tom a party in a year. Because guess what? Tom's going to tell people that we take care of plans over here and that he's going to be the recruiter. Now we don't That's, have to hire a headhunter anymore. So now Tom, you know, is going to be our marketing material. Now Tom's going to tell people, hey, you need to work for them. Eventually we'll be number one eventually because we're going to take care of our core group and, and they're going to take care of us. No, I think uh, that, uh, you're a hundred percent right. Right. Like when you see, you know, teams out there that are really, you know, gelling together and, and really just mm -hmm. seems to be firing on all cylinders and they're doing it collectively together. It's when like the dealership or management team has ownership of the employees plans. And, mm -hmm. and management, I mean, some of the best managers out there, I, I under, know how to kind of structure, you know, their, those plans so that it, it is in line with what the dealership's goals and objectives are, right? Like, I, I, feel mm -hmm. like, I feel like we're always kind of like trying to like force or twist or kind of like push our employees' plans or objectives into our plans and objectives. But in reality, yeah, we, have to, we have to find school. out. That's, yeah, that is old school, right? Like, how do we... Corny. So I guess that'd be my next question then, is like, how does a dealership kind of align themselves where the dealership's goals and objectives are ultimately the salesperson's goals and objectives? And, you know, the two of them are just in sync with each other. Like, what advice would well, you, you give... Have the advice is that uh, if you take care of your people, they'll take care of you. This is this is all like pretty simple. It's it it's, it works. <laughs> you take care of them, they'll take care of you. Work on them first, and they will work on you. That's that's how it goes, you know. But that's you can't true. tell them this true. is our plan. At, you can't tell them this is our plan as a company because that type of stuff. It's like. Mm, it's cool. This is a plan as a company, but even if you're just a, a GSM or GM there, you're, you don't own this company. This is not your company. You, you just work here just like they do. So they need you as much as you need them. You know, at the end of the day, man, you're just a guy with a whip. You do not want to be that guy with the whip. You don't, you don't. No, I'm no, serious. we really don't. No, I'm with you on that they'll, one. They'll, de they'll despise you. You know, they'll hate you. They'll despise you. Um, and, and everything's going to be about you, you know, really, you're just, you know, really, you're just a glorified salesperson. No, hundred percent anymore. You're a glorified salesperson. And you're so, constantly like selling the why do business with us, the why work yeah. for us kind of, you know, kind of, kind of message. Right. Do you find, and I'm curious because I talk to a lot of recruiters, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you find that, you know, you'll spend, amazing amount of time with a dealership developing out all of these structures when it comes around recruiting and best practices and strategies and marketing efforts and so on and so forth and then everything falls apart because the wrong manager is in place or the, the manager wasn't trained on how to effectively manage a team they'd rather just manage efforts um like yeah some some uh again some managers, they're just glorified salespeople. You know, they're just so used to selling the sizzle and not the steak. Remember that? You know, yeah, I remember the steak. that. <laughs> they're still living. They're still living in 1998. 
So it's kind of hard, you know, because you can't really teach an old dog new tricks, you know. So like they'll they'll even juice me up like, hey, I want to hire all these people, and then I send them forty people, and they only hire two. See, that doesn't really add up to me, you know. No, that that's a good point. So you know that's that's when I just I, that's when I can see for myself like, yeah, this guy's full of shit. Just being honest. Yeah, no, no, no. Crap. Seriously though, have you kind of thought that as kind of like we, there, there's more training that has to happen around? how do we recruit and how do we attract people? Like, is, I mean, look, I, I, it's, it's enough that like they can come out and they can hire Again. Dan Williams. Dan can find me some of the best people out there and that's awesome. But then if as a management team, Dan brings me great talent, but I don't necessarily know what to do with this talent or how to create that culture, then everything just kind of falls apart. Like, If you don't know what to do with that talent or create that culture, then you yourself, need to take a step back from that role that you're in because you're not fit for it, period. You're not fit for it. It's you, you know? If you can't handle it, then you're not ready. So whoever that is, you know, if, if, if I bring you a whole bunch of good candidates and you don't know what to do with them, then you need to fire yourself. No, that's totally true, man. Hey, you know, you know one of the fastest ways I find out if those, if those managers are not necessarily trained or maybe just is not the right manager altogether is I always mm -hmm. ask someone like, what's your first day process? What, what, what is the, what is the, all right. So new recruit comes in, all right. Either as a new tech or a new salesperson mm -hmm. or a new advisor or, or new anything, right? Like what is the first day look, look like for them? And I, and I usually I'll find out pretty quick that most dealerships out there don't necessarily actually have a process for this at all. You know, have I'm, you've been in a lot of dealerships, so I'm sure you've seen some great examples of this and some really bad examples of this. So, you know, can you share kind of a, a, a good, you know, first day example, you know, to really kind of kick off someone's employment with us at a dealership? Oh, yeah, a good first day example is to um, you need to actually show them the entire business and then you need to uh, basically have them shadow someone. And then they're going to shadow somebody for half the day. And then for the second half of the day, they're going to sit with you. And then they're going to talk to you about what they saw and, you know, how they felt about the different processes. And then all you have to do is just listen. And then it's all compound uh, interest from there. Then you're just going to build on top of that. You're going to take some away, build, take some away, build, just keep building, you know? Oh, man, 100%. I'm with you on that. Okay, so now my next question. You've been in a lot of dealerships. So give, give me an example of some of the worst first day <laughs> processes uh, or uh, that you've seen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the worst is when uh, I'll send people in for an interview and then the GM doesn't show up or then he's not around or he's running around or he's telling the person that I sent in for an interview um, that they have to wait or he doesn't really offer them the job quite but then till it's when it when uh when there's a lack of communication and again when you're looking at the at the person who's uh who's there and they need a job because you know they got bills they have to pay when you're not treating them exactly like a human you know when you're just treating them like a playing card like we talked about before or like a uh like a like a pokemon card digimon card you know a trading card baseball card you know no, man, that's totally true. That's totally true. I, you, I'm with you on that. Leon. That's that's a pretty sucky first day. If that's if that's like how that's set up. You remember Pogs? Oh my gosh, I remember Pogs. You used to play with those, didn't you? you know, oh, dude, hell yeah. Yeah, Pogs. I had a badass yeah. slammers. The, remember the slammers? Yeah, the slammer. Yeah, and the spinner. <laughs> dude, it was great. Um, that was probably one of my first hustles, to be honest with you. Yeah, was buying and game. selling those things, you know, at the schoolyard, you had right? Had a Ziploc bag. Oh yeah, hell yeah, in the schoolyard for sure. I was yeah. in fifth grade. Yeah, damn straight. I was like, I was, I, I was, yeah. I, I could buy them from, I can buy them from a local store, upsell them at the, upsell them at school, you know, or yeah. trade them for, you know, something I wanted for a, a, a lunch or dessert or something like that. I'm like, right. I like that brownie you got. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you this pog for that brownie. Slammer. Yeah, <laughs> I'll yeah, give yeah. You this <laughs> Dude, that's funny. Right. I haven't talked about Pogs and God knows how long. That's awesome. <laughs> right. So, Dan, um, I know we're getting towards the tail end of our conversation today, but you know, for for the dealerships out there that are 
I, I think understanding that their team really needs to evolve and for their team to evolve, all right, they got to bring in that new fresh blood. All right. Um, and then I think there's a fair amount of people out there that are listening or watching us right now and they're shaking their heads up and down that they need to do a better job of kind of identifying the the why the the why come work with me. All right. What would yes. you say a dealership sitting there trying to trying to define this? It's not necessarily easy to define, right? What are kind of the top three things that you're seeing out there for a kind of a, a why come work with me? Now, what are the top three things that are working or the top three yeah, things? Let's, yeah, let's yeah, top three things that are working. Right, let's do that. Top three things that are working is um get a demo car. Um four day work week, four days, ten hours a day, That's or a good days, one. twelve hours that. a day. That's for text. And the last one is uh if it's a top dealership, it's the it's the fame, it's the glory, you know? And pretty much it that's what i'm seeing that's awesome man that's awesome hey for uh everyone out there that's watching and listening dan and would love to connect with you and kind of follow along with what you do or maybe even talk okay. to you about some recruitment opportunities what is the best way to connect with you sir you know what i'm actually going to say that the best way to connect with me is to give me a personal call 216-233-9752 dan williams get just give me a call Call my phone. That way we don't have to worry about Instagram, Facebook, MySpace, uh, Black Planet, uh, LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> what's some good. other ones? Uh, TikTok, the one you forgot. Yeah, TikTok. <laughs> we don't got to worry about none of Twitter. Just call me. Use your cell phone for what, you, what it's worth and call me. 216-233-9752. Dan Williams, call me. I'll answer. I always believe in having great customer service. And, um, you know, we'll just get the ball ro rolling and we'll just figure it out. Awesome. That's awesome, man. Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to jam with me today. Thank you this so has much been for jamming with me. This has been a blast. <laughs> it's yeah, been hey, fun, dude. And we say. get to talk about pogs. Like, seriously, I haven't talked about pogs yeah, in probably pogs. 30 years. So that was, that was a, that, that's a lot of fun. Hey, thanks, man. Right. You have yourself a good one. Thanks for tuning in to the Strategy Mob Podcast with your host, Jason Harris. Don't want to miss new content? Be sure to sign up to be a mobster at strategymob.com to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe.